when you talk about the idea of uh, co-constructing curriculum, like what does that look like right now? Like, give me like an example of what sure, that could look like. I definitely can. Yeah. So the first time I let go of control enough in my 12th grade AP lit class, I used to teach Hamlet a certain way mm -hmm. almost every single year, right? There were certain objectives that had to be met. I might have varied some of the projects that went through, but there was there was a time frame. There was an overarching idea that I was trying to accomplish. And usually after Hamlet, we went right into Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. And then the kids wrote a one act play and blah, blah, blah. Right. So when we were doing Hamlet, one of my last years at that school, I actually gave out on every single desk copies of my lesson plans for the entire unit, the projects, everything. And I said to them in small groups, these are the objectives we need to meet for this for this lesson, you know, for this unit. Um, Hamlet's a pretty relatable character to kids their age because mm -hmm. he essentially that angsty sort of thing <laughs> going back to that. Yeah. Um, he is. He's like dark and brooding and, you know, there are ways to connect with him. And so I said to them, you have two choices in your group. You could come up with a project or you could default to what we've done before. And then as a class, we'll vote to see which one we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then if we decide on one of the projects that the kids decided on, you'll come up at lunch one day and we'll eat together and we'll design the project together, timeline and all, and you will help me construct success criteria. What is this gonna look like? Benchmark ideas, blah. Needless to say, these four brilliant young ladies came up with the most amazing project mm -hmm. I think I've ever done as a teacher, where what they decided was they were going to psychoanalyze a character from Hamlet. And the project was broken up into like five parts where they first had to mine the text to find out, you know, do good characterization of what Shakespeare said about this character. And then they had to do research on um, psychosis related to the characterization. And then they had to come up with a solution for the psychosis and create a movie. So there was like storyboarding, script writing, um, and then actually creating a movie that diagnoses this character and helps them get the treatment that they need. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we were going to screen those movies because everybody was doing a different character and provide feedback about what they learned about the character and how close it was to the text itself. So that's how I was covering the full text in that way, instead of, you know, sitting in a circle and right. reading act by act by act. The, the work the students created, first of all, I would have never come up with that on my own. No. Like I'm smart, but that was smarter than anything I could have come up with. And so much, it had so much more depth and that group of kids was really into psychology. So it was like this right. nice overlap of what they were super interested in and also this really deep way of looking at the text. So I totally released control over it. And what they came up with was so much better than what I came up with. And bonus, they loved watching the movies right. at the end. They had these crazy projects that they created and produced, essentially, all of them produced those movies and we shared them and it was amazing. So when I talk co-construction, I'm like, legit, here's what we have. Tell me what you got. What do you want to do? Let's make this happen.